Hi, this is Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and today I'm going to investigate using Beal Savar to find the magnetic field from a finite straight wire. It seems like a fairly straightforward problem. We have a current I going through a wire of a certain length, and we're told to find the magnetic field B at a certain point P located a distance A from the wire. There's a bit of an art to setting it up, though, and solving the integral, so uh, I'm going to go through that right now. First, we'll take a look at Beal Savar and just understand all the different terms. So B is the magnetic field at point P. That's what we're solving for. Mu naught is the permeability constant. I is the current, and the current is going to be the same throughout the wire as we integrate along the wire. So we will be able to take that out of the integral. Then we have two vectors. We have ds, which is the current length element in the direction of the current, and r hat, which is the direction from ds to point P. On the bottom, we have r squared, and r is the distance from ds to point P. In front of the integral on the bottom, we have pi, which is yummy, especially apple pie, and 4, which is eh, just 2 squared. All right, so before we even do any math, we can actually use the right-hand rule to find the direction of the magnetic field at P. The direction, not the magnitude. We need to use Beal Savar for the magnitude. So we have ds cross r hat. These are the only vector terms on the right-hand side, so these are what define the direction at P. When you have a cross product, the magnitude of the cross product is, is given by the first term times the second term times sine of the angle between them. So I'm calling the angle between ds and r hat gamma. So we just get ds times 1, because r hat is a unit vector, times sine of gamma k hat. Or we get just ds sine gamma k hat. And this is true in... Uh, all of the different places that we can look at. So we can look at one position, um, we can look at the far right, we can look on the left-hand side of the, the left-hand triangle, and even at the bottom of the origin where the angle is 90 degrees. This is just generally true. So this means that no matter where we look, or no matter which DS segment we choose, the magnetic field contributed by that segment is in the k-hat direction at point P. Now, we can integrate along gamma, and we would get from an angle on the left-hand side that is less than 90 to an angle on the right-hand side that is greater than 90, but the equation we get at the end is a bit nicer if we use theta instead. So that means that we will need to actually replace gamma with theta. If we look at the right-hand side of this triangle, we can see that sine of gamma is equal to sine of pi minus gamma, and then pi minus gamma is on the inside of the triangle, so then sine of pi minus gamma is equal to its opposite A over R. If we look at theta as defined uh, the inside of the um, triangle from the vertical line to the green line R, which is the distance from ds to point P, cos of theta is also equal to A over R. So we can write that sine of gamma is equal to cos of theta. If we look at the left side, we'll see the same thing sine of gamma, in this case we don't need to consider pi minus gamma, but sine of gamma is equal to A over R, is equal to cos of negative theta. And here we have negative theta, but the cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x, so again we have A over R is equal to cos of theta, and then sine of gamma is equal to cos theta. So in both cases we get sine of gamma is cos theta, and if we substitute that into the expression we just had for ds cross R, sorry, ds cross r hat, which was ds times sine gamma k, we can substitute cos of theta in there, so we get ds cross r hat is equal to cos of theta times ds k hat. Also notice that cos of theta is equal to a over r, and I mentioned that twice already, but this is something we're going to reuse very shortly. Okay, so the next step then is that to actually, if we want to express the final answer in terms of theta, we still have a ds in the Beal Savar expression, and we still have r. And those things depend on theta and uh, to a lesser degree a. Um, so, first we can express r in terms of theta and a. And recall, cos of theta equals a over r, so we can just multiply, we get r equals a divided by cos theta, or r is equal to a times secant of theta. Then, if we actually look at the triangles again, we can set up an expression for tan theta is equal to s over a, where s is the distance from the origin to where ds is. Then s is equal to a tan theta, and if we take the derivative of that, we get ds is equal to a times secant squared theta d theta. So we're getting closer to where we want to be. 
Finally, we can substitute these into BL sub R. Um, first, I mentioned at, at the beginning that the current is the same everywhere in this wire, so we can take that out of the integral. Then we substitute in that ds is a secant squared theta in d theta into the top, so we get a nice expression on the top. Then we can substitute r is equal to a secant theta on the bottom. That term is squared, so when we expand that, then we notice that we have secant squared theta on the top and on the bottom, so those cancel out. We also have an a on the top and an a squared on the bottom, so we can cancel out an a, leaving us with mu naught i over 4 pi integral of cos theta d theta over a k hat. And we can pull out the a as well because the a is also constant throughout the integral. And the final expression we get for this is mu naught i over 4 pi a. The, then we take the integral of cos theta d theta. And the direction again is in k hat. Okay. Finally, all we have to do is take the integral. So we can integrate along the wire from one end of the wire to the other from theta is equal to negative theta 1. So we're using the y-axis as an origin for the angle theta. So we're integrating then from theta equals negative theta 1 to theta is equal to theta 2. And the final result that we get is that the magnetic field is equal to mu naught i over 4 pi a times sine of theta 2 plus sine of theta 1. And in this example, it's in the direction of k hat. In general, you can find the magnitude for a finite segment of wire, presuming that you can calculate these angles, and you usually can. It's just a matter of drawing it big enough that you can see them. And then you get the magnitude of the magnetic field B is equal to mu naught I over 4 pi A times sine of theta 1 plus sine of theta 2. And then you would get the direction from the right-hand rule. I really hope this can help you. I wish you all the best in your physics, and if you have any questions or suggestions for other videos like this, please head over to redmondphysicstutoring.com and let me know. Good luck!